have a problem. As you can tell, when we play the Marvel Studios, you can see um, that the words are, uh, are appearing out of nowhere because, you know, the line is creating it pretty much. So there's no word underneath the line. And the way we can fix this if we, is we go, we add in one more plane. <laughs> we add in another plane. And with this new plane, so we're going to go shift, eight, put our cursor back in the center with, with shift C. And I'm going to turn back on the grid floor so we can see what we're doing. Um, and shift A, add in another plane. So many planes today. And we're going to hit RX90 on my keyboard once again. And we're going to scale this to the size RSX, scale it to the size of the word Marvel. And we'll drag it down beneath it and beneath the second line right there. I'm going to turn on ambient occlusion right now so we can see what we're doing a bit better so i'm gonna move this just behind oops and move this just behind the line here so right there i'm gonna move this back behind there so we can see a bit of a shadow i'm gonna turn up the strength and the distance as well uh, so we can see where the line starts and where the plane begins uh yeah that's pretty good all right so there it looks pretty ugly but there we go we fixed that all right so now what we have is we need this this uh plane to cover up the word touched by kai um but still remain behind the line so what we're going to do is we're going to move the word touch by kai back we're going to move that back um so now the lines are much ahead of the word touched by kai and the plane is in between the words touched by kai and the lines so what we have now is if I go into material mode and I make this plane red, I make this color the same red as the um, the red we use for the background. So which one of these is that? Uh, I think it's th this one right here. Yep, that's one right, that right there. So we're going to call this red so that's easier to keep track of. And this is the same color as the background in red back. That's the same color. And the, the way this is going to work is we're going to – material mode. We're going to go back to words. And with our plane, with our plane, we're going to make sure that on frame 90, this is completely covering up the word touched by Kai. And we're going to hit I, location. We can actually scale this plane down because we don't need it to be that big. So we can just like do that and then hit I, location, right? And then on frame 100, we're going to make sure that this line stays right behind the white line. This white line right here, that's the white line. And this is the red, the red uh, box. This is like our sensor box. We're pretty much censoring the word touched by Kai so that it doesn't go over top of, uh, so you don't see it before you're supposed to. So this will make a, a lot more sense in a second. But we're going to hit I, location. So now our plane moves sort of with the word touched by Kai. Um, but what it needs to do is it needs to move more with, with that word. So what we're going to do is we're going to go frame by frame with automatic keyframing on. We're going to make sure this this plane never leaves underneath this white line. So right here, we're going to go the same way. And right here as well, it's, it's peeking up above it, but we need it to be below it. Right there. Um, and make sure that never crosses it. So with I'm turning ambient occlusion off. So now you can see what we've done is we've created a bit of a sensor bar so that you cannot see the words touched by Kai before they appear after the line. Um, so when we have all of these scenes working together, you'll see that this red looks like, like if I, if I go ahead and I turn on my keyframing off, if I go ahead and I scale this up and move it back, you'll be able to see that when I, when I thumb through, ooh, I can't do that. When I, if I added another plane, instead of duplicating that one, if I do add another plane, don't do this. I'm just showing as an example, by the way. Um, if I go ahead and type in red. If I thumb through these frames, you should be able to see that the word touched by Kai looks like it's appearing out of nowhere. And it's actually not. It's just tricking your eyes because, you know, we have that plane there. Um, but there's a problem. If I go ahead and I render this with this plane right there, right there, so that it's right behind it. If I go ahead and I render this, you should be able to see that we have uh, – ooh, we need to turn on ambient occlusion, by the way. So world settings, ambient occlusion, change this to solid black in the world, in the world tab. All right, so now we can render this. If I render this, you should be able to see that we have shadows. And this is not good because you can see exactly what we've done. You can see the sensor bar. You can see the background. You can see the distance between them both. Um, and that's not good. That's ruining the illusion. So what we need to do is with the plane selected, with the sensor plane selected, we're going to go to this little uh, this little object 
this little object tab right here with a little cube. And we're going to turn off all of these except for camera. And we're the same thing uh, with, this is just an example. So in our, with all of the other lines as well, we're going to turn off everything except for camera. Everything except for camera has to go um, in the word Marvel as well. So the camera can still see the all the objects but the, it doesn't cast any shadows it doesn't do anything so when, if we go to red back as well i don't want this to cast any shadows either and um the the comics don't matter so we can leave those all alone um so on our words scene i'm going to save this once again because that's a good idea in our words scene what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that we have our, our our scene all set up and now we are ready for final assembly Right now, we have everything we need to go ahead and compile all of these scenes together. Um, and that is that. I want to make sure that we have everything set up properly. So in our main scene, uh, we start on, on our words. It starts to show at frame 90. Um, so I think that may just be a bit too early because in the Marvel intro, we have the words Marvel coming in and then it fades to the red, fades to the red. There's a second where it's there by itself. And then as soon as the red is fully in, then Studios pops in. So that's what we need to accomplish today. Um, so I'm going to go into, until frame. Yeah, that's pretty good. I think that's pretty good. So I'm going to push back our words. So on words, I'm going to push all of these animations back uh, by 10 frames so I'm gonna go open the dope sheet one more time um, and with our planes I'm gonna move all these back so box select everything with B G to move them all I'm gonna move that back to start at frame 100 instead of ending there so it starts at frame 100 ends on frame 110 and then our comics stop on frame 120 on our main scene our comics stop coming out on like somewhere around frame 25 125 so what we have now is we have them all compiled everything is perfect it's gonna work completely fine so I'm gonna pick a nice frame so we can render um, this out so just anything that's random just pick that all right so we're gonna render this this uh, first scene of the comic book page and see if that looks good all right the motion blur is working so now we can open up the node editor so in the node editor I'm gonna split my window into two um, and I'm going to, uh, you know, we're going to do, we're going to just use the compositor. So up at the top, we're going to use compositing. We're going to switch to compositing. Um, and then we're going to hit use nodes and backdrop. Um, and with our composite node, we're actually going to unhook this for a second. Cause we don't need, we don't need that right now. We're going to hit shift a, and we're going to add in an output viewer node. So pretty much this is saying render the, the the layer of main, our comic book pages, render that into the viewer, oh, render that into the viewer. So now we can see what we've rendered. And since we didn't do that, do a full render, uh, it's only showing us a little bit. So I'm going to go to the sampling, turn the sampling down to like 20 just for the time being so we can render this. Uh, and I'm going to turn the uh, resolution scale to 25 so it's easier to render and quicker to render. Um, so that's that was much faster as you can see so now what we have is we have our comic book pages there and ready for us to go now the problem is it's only rendering our comic book pages uh, by itself earlier I took a screenshot of my test that I did um, to just to make sure I don't forget anything while this tutorial is going on so as you can see what we have here is a couple alpha over node uh, alpha overlay nodes and a couple other scenes so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna duplicate this render layer scene twice. So Shift D with that render layer and put that right there, and Shift D once again and put that render layer right there. These three are gonna be our layers. Up here at the top we have our layers. So we're gonna change this from main to red uh, to, to words. And we're gonna do words first, and then we're gonna change this one to red back. So now we have every single one of our scenes in the same uh, node set up here. And what we're gonna do is we're going to unhook that for the time being so we can get a better view of what we, what's, what's going on. So we're going to add Shift A, and we're going to hit Search, and we're going to type in Alpha, Alpha, and we're going to click this Alpha over uh, node. And we're going to place that right down there. With this, we're going to duplicate it, and we're going to put that just beneath that one right there. So we're going to hook up the image of our, our, our comic book pages, which is our main scene, into the top of the Alpha over, no, alpha over uh, node.